The top of the lungs is the apex, and the broad bottom that rests on the diaphragm is called the base. The surface anatomy of the lungs differs slightly from the right to the left. The right lung has three lobes, superior, middle, and inferior. There are two fissures separating them, the horizontal and oblique. The left lung must make room to accommodate the heart since it tips leftward. The left lung has two lobes, superior and inferior, with an oblique fissure separating them. The medial surface is called the cardiac notch. The hilum of each lung is the region where the primary bronchioles enter. The pulmonary arteries enter and the pulmonary veins exit. This image of the back of the heart nicely shows these elements in position in the body. Looking more closely at the hilum, we can see the holes where the bronchioles and pulmonary arteries enter and the pulmonary veins exit. The pleural cavity is the space between the visceral pleura and the parietal pleura. The pleura is a serous membrane, which means that it is a membrane folded back on itself like a fist pushing into a balloon. The part of the membrane that is fused with the lung itself and is part of the surface of the lung is the visceral pleura. That extends out and around to the inside of the chest wall and diaphragm below, which is called the parietal pleura. Imagine the space inside the thorax with a tiny, shriveled up lung. The parietal pleura is shown in red. The visceral pleura is shown in green. In an inflated lung, this is hardly a space or cavity as the green visceral pleura adhered to the surface of the lung is touching the parietal pleura that is adhered to the inside of the thoracic cavity wall and there's a watery fluid between the two allowing for lubrication to reduce friction as the chest wall expands or recoils inward and the lungs move with it. The pleura are basically stuck together, but they can still move across each other. The lungs' elastic components make it want to pull inward, making the pressure in the pleura space slightly negative. The pleural cavity is essential for us to breathe. The thoracic cavity changes shape, either expanding or recoiling, which draws in or pushes out the air. As the thoracic cavity changes shape, the lungs follow due to the visceral and parietal pleural relationship. For inspiration to take place, the diaphragm, which is the floor of the thoracic cavity, contracts and drops like pulling back on a syringe. The chest wall also expands outward with the use of the external intercostal muscles. This expansion of the thoracic cavity draws air in. To expire or remove air from the lungs, the diaphragm only has to relax and it will bounce up, pushing the air out. The internal intercostal muscles can also aid in more forcefully pushing the air out by pulling the chest wall inward. Inspiration is the act of creating a larger space to suck air into the lungs. This is done with the contraction of the diaphragm and external intercostal muscles which are found between the ribs. If you need to inhale a lot of air, such as when you may need to blow out your birthday candles, you will use additional muscles to enlarge the thoracic cavity further. The sternocleidomastoid muscles and the scaling muscles in the neck, as well as the pectoralis minor muscle, can participate. Looking inside the chest through the inhalation process, the diaphragm contracts and the external intercostals contract. Both groups of muscles increase the size of the thoracic cavity, which draws air into the lungs. Expiration is the act of creating a smaller space to push air out of the lungs. This is done with the relaxation and recoil of the diaphragm and contraction of the internal intercostal muscles, which are found between the ribs on the inside of the chest wall. You can also buckle over, pushing on your abdominal cavity, aiding the lift of the diaphragm to push out even more air if you need to blow out your birthday candles. When the parietal pleura is damaged from the outside, air is allowed to enter the pleural space. Once air enters the pleural space, the visceral pleura on the surface of the lungs detach or become unstuck from the parietal pleura. There is nothing holding the lungs to the chest wall and the lungs collapse due to the natural elastic recoil of the connective tissue that makes up the lungs. 
This is a pneumothorax, which means air in the chest. This can only be repaired by removing the air and re-establishing the visceral pleura adhering to the parietal pleura. First, repair the wound, then remove the air in the pleural space. Finally, seal the wound to prevent air from re-entering and allow the wound to heal.